And welcome to another fun episode of the Gaming Halls of Rivalries. I'm your host, Jeremy, alongside me, the one and only, Curtis. How you doing? Doing well. And this time we are going into more of the background of gaming. Characters that you didn't know they... Well, they exist, but you, you paid them no mind. You kind of just walked on off. Side. Right? Yeah. They, but they've been there, and they had your back. They were your, they were your item seller. They were your uh, save points. They were your information you talked to to get the places. Um, sometimes they're playable. Sometimes they're playable. Um, I guess you could say for your for your, for um, your the one research you're doing. I think they were playable at one point. Yes, I think you could say one was a like a sidekick of somebody or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, they come in different forms that we don't know about. And I think honestly, at a point, they took their own journey to help out their world that they're in and these are your little npcs that help you out by the names of totes from the mario series and the moogles from the final fantasy series so uh when we did when i decided to do this this topic i always i always wanted to do pick ones that are like kind of out of place but familiar like mm -hmm. like no one talks about these characters you know they're kinda, yeah. they're 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 so they're around so much they just become they're just there right they're part of, they are a part of the scenery you know yeah i mean they're even like um like store items in even in the in the games like you're like i'll, I'll take a, a little take a little toe doll or a moogle doll like mm -hmm. like they influence so much in the game they become like items even like a regular mushroom and like mario the power up but we're gonna go a little bit further of all these things so first off let's go ahead and go into the world final fantasy and talk about the world of the Moogles. So, Curtis, what do you go ahead and lead us there? Well, the Moogles first appeared in Final Fantasy III, and surprisingly, they've had an appearance in every title since then, in some fashion or form. The only exception I could find was Final Fantasy IV, where they were absent. The importance mm. of the Moogles varies heavily from title to title, whether it's part of the story or not. And they are either playable characters or they just make cameos either as side characters a village a store owner mm -hmm. they occasionally also appear as summoned monsters that usually grant beneficial effects to the party um like for example in crisis core the final fantasy 7 spin-off it's actually a limit break it's um one of the limit breaks the digital mind wave summon for zack it casts regain and it can actually level up your magic. Okay. Depending on the uh, the rank of the level that you achieve that. Going all the way back to Final Fantasy three, they were bodyguards for the Sage of Dog the Sage Daga. Final Fantasy V, there was an actual entire Moogle village that Bart's the main character came across in his journeys. Uh Final Fantasy VI was when definitely when they got thrown a bone. I mean the the character Mog, who is, I what would you say, the most recurring Moogle in the series, the the specific one named Mog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, um. He was. He was. Well, Mog was a playable character in Final Fantasy VI. Um. That's in, right. In Final Fantasy VII, the character Kate Sith actually rode a giant toy Mog. And that one, that one was, was probably the most different Moogle about all of them because. I think maybe that's the biggest one we ever seen in the series. It was the biggest one, and it did not have the red, um, the little ball on the ball head. Ball on the head. Mm -hmm. um, now the Moogle. What's surprising too is the Moogle actually the ball Moogle with the ball in the head actually does appear in seven. It's during one of the mini games. Okay. I think it was the uh, when you're sl uh, snowboarding down the hill. Okay. Was, uh, the gold saucer that mini game. Okay. Because um, isn't that the place where you can get the uh, the gold chocobo or something like that? Like if you do all like all the stuff in the in that uh, little casino or something chocobo like that. Was done through breeding. Oh okay yep. okay. Could you do it there or do you, breeding um, at all? It's been a long time since I played seven. Breeding took place in the open world, um, but ra racing played a big part. Okay in, okay there so you go. Yes there okay. you go. I always um, think those Moogles run that casino. I don't know how. I don't know why. I, mm -hmm. I feel like they just run business like that, too. I'm skipping to 10, um, another game that they were prominent. They were equipable dolls. They were the 
Lulu, the the black mage in Final Fantasy X, used little stuffed animals. They were anything from cactars. There was even an onion knight that was a stuffed doll. But a lot of her, a good portion of her weapons were moogles. That you could add different elemental attacks to or different attributes. Okay. The next time a moogle... Uh, skipping over 11 and 12, going to into 13. Mog, um, there was actually one of the shopping networks in 13 at the save points, one of the stores, which was a Moogle shop for magic. In 13? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, in 13, too, was another part where Mog played a big part in the story. He actually was the weapon that Sarah, Lightning's sister, used. He would transform into a bow and a sword. In 13th uh, Lightning Returns, there was another Mog- uh, Moogle village that Lightning could Now, Now, to. if I'm correct, too, you, did you did you mention 10? Yes. With Lulu, right? With Lulu. Okay. Don't you think it's quite interesting that I think out of all of Final Fantasy, Lulu had the, like, the most collective editions of, Mo- of the Moogles as a doll? Like, yes. Like, I noticed like she has a bunch of them that she rotates, I think. Yes, there were a bunch that you could rotate. Like in different and out. colors too. Different color. Well, yeah, the different colors were like. I think it would change if you gave it a fire element or. Oh, okay. A blizzard okay. element. Okay. Okay. Um, briefly touching on ten two, and this relates to thirteen. Uh, Lightning returns. L- Yuna in thirteen in uh ten two they used the just fear system. And one of the dress spheres was the uh, costumes of where they would wear monsters or okay. stuffed outfits. That's right. Yuna's was the Moogle. Um, the others used um, a Cactar and a Kate Sith. Okay. The going now jumping back to 13 Lightning Returns. Uh, similarly to the dress sphere, Lightning it had different outfits, different uh, I cannot remember what they were called, but different armor loadouts. And there was one called the Moogle Queen that she was able to transform into. Okay, okay. Um, skipping ahead to Final Fantasy fifteen. It was challenging because the developers for fifteen wanted to really ground the series into as close to real life as possible. Okay. Yeah, you're going to have fantasy monsters. You're going to have fantastical beasts but they were ha- kind of debating whether or not to even have the moogle mm-hmm. they actually had an open poll in japan asking would you like to see the moogle make some sort of appearance in final fast fantasy 15 in some capacity or not the poll was very positive so they got to uh, develop the moogle i think it's interesting that they decided to do a voting thing because i, w- I know they wanted to keep it realistic but well, I'll let you finish. I'll let you finish. We'll go yeah, into well, more debate about it. I like it. that you brought that up because, you know, Moogles are really <laughs> they're kind of adorable. And they're almost like, regardless of the Final Fantasy game title, they're prominent either as a race, mm-hmm. as a almost uh, pop culture item, you know, like mm-hmm. with the stuffed animals. Right. And, you know, that's definitely what they did with um, 15 was um, the sister of Gladiolus. Uh, she actually makes Noctis a stuffed mo- uh, Moogle that you can throw in the heat of battle to distract attention away from your party mm. because they'll actually attack the doll instead of you. Oh, okay. Okay. Or it, it'll at least distract them. Okay. But well, yeah, I thought that that was really neat that there was a poll and mm. it was kind of challenging, like... For them, like, well, what do we do? We've grounded it so much in reality. Mm-hmm. Um, what do we do with this Moogle? I honestly thought that that little beast that Noctis is with, like, in the dream, was considered some kind of form of Moogle-ish. It looked like at first, but, you know, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Was, you know, you know the creature. Yeah, of course you know the creature I'm yes. talking about. But, like, I don't know. Do you think he looks kind of Moogle-ish to you a little bit? Maybe? Maybe no. not? No, I don't know. I feel like it looks like the most realistic Moogle form. That's why I got the it, got the yeah. of it. Yeah, I get where oh, you're so, going with that. Okay. Though. Um, I think it's also interesting too. Like any game that affects Final Fantasy, like say Kingdom Hearts, 
a, a, a Moogle is there. In yeah, effect. De- de- definitely it's become a fun thing to throw in any Square Enix, Square Soft title. Um, you bring up uh, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, there is actually a little Moogle uh, in the Organization 13 robes. Mm-hmm. Um, Moogles run the shops in Kingdom Hearts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think... I think there was one other point they were one time one time in the game they were a save point one time my other than that was mostly portals but there were mm-hmm. i think there was one time you could say points but yeah they were mostly shops yes yeah um i forget in the game where they mostly go i maybe they're at the points where the disney characters were not there mm-hmm. i guess and that's where they were because most of the time your disney characters were mostly in the town like traverse town and whatever oh and going back to 15 if you participated in the chocobo festival which happened during mm-hmm. uh, January and February of 2016. There was actually people dressed up in stuffed Moogles, kind of like a Disney World attraction, mm-hmm. how people are dressed up as okay. characters. Yeah, yeah, it was really neat. Um, so do you think it's interesting that some Moogles are batless and some are? Yes. It Was that part, do you think that was part of the way they involved? Like at first they had wings and then later in the series they kind of, just slowly disappeared. I definitely think it came, went with the character design just changing over time. Okay. Okay. Because some still have their wings and the red poof. Um, the Mog from 7 definitely has the wings but lacks the poof okay. on his head. Okay. Um, The other thing that I noticed was uh, in Dragon Quest Nine, there actually appears a Moogle. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Well, was, it, was it a shopkeeper at one still or... Do you remember at all? I cannot remember. Okay. Another thing, too, I noticed is, of course, you know, they actually speak English just like yes. normal humans do. But they tend to, like, say Kupo at, at the end. Yeah, at the every end. Um, does, I think that believes that's, like, means, um, like, nuts. Like, the Koopa, yeah. Yeah, I think it means nuts. And I think it's interesting because there is there is some games that they don't say Kupo at the very end, but most common they say Kupo at the, at the end. At I feel like end. that... They talk to you, but they want you to still feed them. Like, like I answer your question. Give me, give me food. Give me, yeah, give right. Me but I think it's interesting how sometimes these Moogles get um, different opportunities for stuff. Like one moment you can see a Moogle like on the street just selling scraps and stuff, and then one moment they're in like a high quality place, like a you could say like a hotel, you could say like a casino, mm-hmm. and they're run, they're they're help running in this business, but like they look the same. So like I never know like. How they get these jobs, I yeah. guess. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, you know what's really neat about Final Fantasy is they turn, whether it's a friend or enemy, I'll use the Cactar as an example. Um, they love making figurines, like having those in the game world. Um, there's a little kid in 15 named Talcott who is obsessed with Cactars. And you collect those. Um, going back to the Moogle... Yeah, they're stuffed animals. If you look at... There is a scene in Advent Children, the spinoff movie of Final Fantasy VII. There's a little girl that has a, a Moogle doll. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's very true. Hmm. Uh, so what, are you are you yourself a fan of the Moogles, even though they're in the background? They're just even there? Even though they're in the background? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. They, You know, they they almost go as much as hand-in-hand with Final Fantasy as a Chocobo does. Yeah, yeah. Because even even the Moogles have been on covers of games. Yes, I I believe they were on the cover of um the Super Nintendo one, uh, Final Fantasy three, aka Final Fantasy six. They were on the cover of that one. Uh, I can't think what other covers they've been on, but yeah, they've been around a lot, even through like posters and all this stuff. But you don't really They're see a chunk about that much. They're very synonymous with Final Fantasy. Okay, okay, all right. So. Um, let's take a break. Okay. And then when we come back, we'll get into the world of the Toads, the ones uh, that also been around around that time. And we'll talk about what their jobs and what they did in influence. And mm-hmm. then we'll, after that, we talk about the future of those creatures. That's going to be interesting. Yes. Uh, so, all right, we'll be right back. Hey, this is Jeremy Evans, a.k.a. Your In-Game Boss, and I want to thank you so much for listening to this podcast as part of the In-Game Boss program, a network of gaming and other variety shows that you can find on Podbean, YouTube, and, of course, iTunes. Shows like the In-Game Boss Podcast. 
the gaming halls of rivalries. Bond Never Dies and Area 44. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. And welcome back to the Gaming Halls of Rivalry. I'm your host, Jeremy, along with Curtis, and we just went through the Moogle era. Um, so we're going to get into the other side, another old school NPC that's been around for a very long time, and that is the Toads. Uh, so the interesting about the Toads, you know, everybody kn probably knows by now that they actually like premiered, you know, and the Super Mario Brothers in 1985, basically, around that time. We yes. still, to this day, don't know when the American edition of this game got released. But we know the Toads have been there. And the Toads are basically, you know, just like the Moogles, they are, they, you know, they've done several jobs. But what they did in the very first game was they were more of the information. We don't know how they got in that castle. All we know is that they were t always told Mario, look princess is not here you know she's in another castle and we do this about seven times <laughs> so until we finally get the bowser uh but the one thing i like about um the toes are they establish what jobs they do based on their colors of their of their heads so people don't know toads have come in different colors you see, there's a there's a green one there's a yellow one there's a blue one and they all have very different jobs and different personalities to go with that uh, most of the blue ones are mostly right like, item sellers yellow ones are more of the information people um the green ones are more of the workers because they all live in the mushroom kingdom run by princess peach or aka princess toadstool for the american eyes right mm -hmm. so from there these toads also been around doing other stuff like um, the first time you ever actually played a toad and you can say it counts but it doesn't count because it was it was mario 2 so you yeah. find out that he's it was more, a dream it, it was a dream so really he didn't it, this he didn't really exist and so these are this toad particularly was like super fast um very agile and the people probably didn't know this, but when we talk about Toad, we always talk about the Toad that we know, you know, from the cartoons, from the main one. But you have to realize, too, that these Toads were at, are also called a race called the Toads. It just happened that this particular Toad was called Toad, but there is a their whole race is called Toads. Mm -hmm. So that's why, like, when you when you see a female Toad, you know, the only one I know, I, I think she's Toadette. the female. Yeah, but I think she's like the female. She's like the Smurf. She's like the only female you know in that group, right? Yes. So. So that's Toadette, but then you have different names of other Toads, but that whole race is called Toads. And so, and the only time that you actually see Toad playable in, in anything really is the recent one on the Wii, on the Wii U called uh, Treasure Tracker, where Toad's job is, is funny because it makes sense now of what you do in the Mario games, but he's the one that actually goes search for items. That he puts in those question blocks oh, for you wow. to go through the game. So, you know, he goes and finds, you know, um, you know, mushrooms, flowers. But the main thing also is to help find the stars. And that's where it started off with the Mario 64 saga, where that toad particularly went to go find these items to help Mario out. And we also noticed in a game called Wario Wood, which is kind of a puzzle game, kind of like uh, Tetris, Dr. Robotnik, Me Bean Machine, Toad was the one that had to help defeat wario and you know help the force out and everything like that and then of course smash brothers not as a playable character but used as a as an as a special move by princess peach right mm -hmm. and he comes in and he's kind of like yelling and screaming i think his ability um uh, if i'm correct curtis was kind of like help block block yeah, hits or dissolve and he's like kicking <laughs> yeah yeah he'll block his or dissolve something yeah at one point. and it actually does damage but not that much it's more of annoyance yes than actually anything and another thing too was i think i think he's the one that inspired it i don't know i don't know if he's yeah i think i, I want to say he's the one inspired but he inspired of the whole digging up and throwing an item i think that was toes out of everyone's abilities princess peach was you know you're you're gliding you're floating luigi was the super higher jump than mario mario was a jack of all trade like the middle of everything he was the average person but toad was known to be quick to throw items and throw at people he was supposed to be the best at that 
So that's a very um Yeah, he was definitely the strongest yes, one. Yes. Yes, in the fastest. And also too, he was the one that um can also take these powers. So he can be a big he can actually take mushrooms and be big. Um when he takes a fire f- power, he actually changes his color. He's um he's red with the no, is is a burnt orange with red circles, hmm. I want to say. And the only time you saw that one was more in the cartoons, but in the game though, it's more of I want to say a burnt orange, but more whitish. It's interesting. It's interesting. Um. So, but to- like I said, Toad has been more the information person. So most of the time when you play a game, you go to Toad, and Toad is the one that kind of helps you send you your route where you need to go. Like, hey, I saw Princess go this way. You should go this way. Or hey, or try doing the long jump. Or try right, doing- right. Or yeah. or saying like, hey, I noticed this. Come over here. Or most of the time, like in the case, like in the Paper Mario series, which those are probably where their most personality is this, in Paper yes. Mario, because you see a lot of their emotions. And most of the time, those toes are most of the frightened ones where they're they're too scared to do, um, you know, stuff like that. And they do emit spores. They do emit spores, but you don't see it. There's Sometimes there's a lot of information about these toes, but you don't really see them do it. It's just kind of like, I don't know. I feel like they're 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 just there to be there, but you, you'll never kn- you never know about it unless they're a really important key to the story, right? Mm-hmm. And so, um, so Curtis, I know you're a big Moogle fan, but how do you feel about you know the Toads in the Mario game? What have they done for you in the game? Were they very helpful to you at all? Or are they kind of like thanks for the information, but I could have figured this out myself? Wait, wait. definitely the latter. Um almost going to the annoyance factor like if you are absolutely trying to hunt a 100 percent complete completionist level a mario game on the modern games the the wii mario there will be helpless toads in the item box mm. that you have to escort to the end of the stage man carrying that little guy makes the mm. level so much harder sometimes mm-hmm. Um, you're platforming you're holding this little guy you get hit you drop him and he's like running back and forth panicking waiting for you to shake the Wii remote to pick him back up on your head and you're trying to navigate the whole level you're Super Mario you're the after you eat the mushroom there's spaces you can't go through anymore cause the toad won't let you have clearance anymore right and and the one thing I noticed from the toads I think a lot of people our favorite of is the sports series. Um, yes. They were very, very, I think they're probably one of the top picks that people pick. And we're talking about the Mario Kart series. We're talking about, uh, we're talking about the tennis games. We're talking about the soccer games. We're talking about the party games, uh, baseball, basketball, name of Mario, because you, you forget that Mario is a Jack of all trades. Like he's name a job and he probably has done it before. Toad has done it too. Like Mark, people forget that Mario was a referee in, in punch out and that Toad, but Toad was also a referee in Mario Sonic Olympic games. So, like, Toad has done the job, too. I think Toad replaced a lot of Mario's jobs yes. later in the series, I guess you can say. And so, I I honestly, I do like the Toads. I think the Toads are, um, to me, compared to the Moogles, that they are a little bit more characteristic. You know, characteristic. characteristic. I think. I think. Yeah. I think they just show more personality, mm-hmm. and they talk a little bit more. And I think they come in different. They have. They just have more variety in them. I don't know if you agree or not, but I think they just have way more variety in them. And I think that a Moogle hasn't had. Now, I could be wrong. This can be from mobile games. This can be from little games like on the Game Boy. But I've never seen a, a solo Moogle game. No, I have not. But I have. But we have seen Toad have his own. Yeah, you know, going games. back to your cap- the Captain Toad game that you were talking mm-hmm. about on the the Wii U, mm-hmm. just him having a more proactive role was that's that's really good. That he needed a, a solo game. Mm-hmm. No, get Mario out of here completely. <laughs> right, Mario right, right. Because sometimes it's always good to have the. It's good to show. It's good to know that Nintendo cares about these characters. Like you know what? Here's an idea. I don't think it fits, but. Maybe a toe fits it. Let's see what the toe can do with this. And it shows mm-hmm. the kind of like, you know, almost every character now on the Nintendo on the Nintendo cast has their own game. Luigi has his mansion. Princess has her one and only game on the uh, yes, DS. The DS. Yeah, and now Toad has his own game. Uh, the only person left that hasn't had his own game is Bowser, but you know he's a bad guy. But <laughs> but yeah, those are 
those are basically your main information about the toads. Um, so let's talk about the future of both characters, right? And so let's go with the Moogle first. So Curtis, what do you what do you see the future of these Moogles in the games? Do you see him still around? Do you see him having his own game? What do you, what do you want from them? In the main series, there I definitely see them still making their cameos. Uh, any other Square Enix game that comes out in the future, there might be a cameo here and there. I honestly would like to see a spin-off game mm -hmm. with the fiction featuring uh, Moogles. Feature main series, I would actually like to see a party member that's a Moogle. Okay. Okay. Would you like the traditional design of the Moogles like back in the day, or would you like to like kind of a redesign for more of a modern? I redesign. Yep. Okay. Would you want the ball on the head or not? Still, yes. You still want the ball. You want the ball. <laughs> um, I actually would like to see more of a simulation of the Moogles game. Um, see how how the life of a Moogle is. I mean, mm -hmm. you see these Moogles run shops. You've seen all of them. But let's see them, like, out in the field. Let's see them, like, you know, what does a Moogle do? I mean, like, let's let's see a game of that. And it, I don't think we can do a normal gameplay of it. I think it has to be kind of a simulation, kind of like Stardew Valley or, or uh, I would, you know, like I would have loved to have seen a Moogle in the King's Glaive, a part of King Regis's. Okay, <laughs> for the people that don't know, uh, King Glaive is part of the Final Fantasy 15. It's a movie. The King's Glaive were the bodyguards and the royal bodyguards for King Regis, uh, Noctis's father in Final Fantasy 15. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he has a vast kingdom and. You know, there's no, there's other things besides just humans in Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's the fiends and the monsters, but yeah, I would I would have loved to see the Arc Mage mm -hmm. Moogle, a mm -hmm. magic wielding one that mm -hmm. was a part of the King's Glaive, showing all races in the, his kingdom. Mm -hmm. Would you would you play a full blown um, RPG Moogle with just Moogle and with other just creatures? Moogles? and other creatures? So like yes, you'll have different. You'll maybe have maybe a couple Moogles in there, you know, so the other Red Mage, but maybe like Chocobo will join the group or a of them protecting their village. Absolutely, that would be cool. Or even like um, have different monsters, yeah, join on his voyage. You yes. know, there's a lot of cool creatures out there. So you know, maybe a Cactor can join his group or something like that. Maybe like a Neo Kuni or maybe a Pokemon style oh or gosh. something like that. A Moogle, a Tonberry, and a Cactar. That would be that Because would be you've fun. seen that in Dragon Quest with Dragon Quest Joker where he just collects. He collects mo the various mo monsters. Monsters and uses them in battle and stuff. So it'd be kind of cool if Moogle goes into like um, a giant journey. A monster recruit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they go on a journey like maybe saving the world in their own way or something like that. I mean, heck, I mean, the the blue slime from Dragon Quest has own, had his own game. Yes. It was slime a, Rocket or something like that. It was a like. tank <laughs> yeah tank game yeah so i think that i love that game that it was on the ds okay it was really funny so that's a game so that's something i could see with the moogles um toads we've seen them basically do mostly everything, everything so, Mario can. so so what can we see from the toad um i would like to see a princess and a toad game together yeah honestly i would like to see them do something together like they go on their own journey it could be a sequel to the super princess peach game i don't know i just feel like that those two need a journey together for some somehow like her and a bunch of toads and they have to work together kind of like um um what's that game um on the on the psp um i'm gonna probably say it wrong but it, had, it was the artwork but it's all like um looks like sketches of like people with eyes and they they work together and they have to travel all the time like Papat, papat, papaton, or something like that. Patapon, patapon. Yeah, maybe something like that, or, mm -hmm. or just a game where you know Princess is the leader and she has to use the toast to her ability to. to I want you know a tower defense with toads would be really fun mm -hmm. oh like a pikmin yes yeah 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 i would like to see a princess like a pikmin style where she used the toes oh, who used the toes to yeah. do um, some work you know get the toes to lift up stuff toes build stuff you know like maybe they're the ones that build the pipes i haven't seen the mario brothers made the pipes maybe the toes made the pipes. we just don't know it i think there is a plumbing toad somewhere in that game that we don't even know about Mm -hmm. Let's see. Well, what about you? What, what toads do you want to see? What do you want? What do you want to see from toads? Definitely another solo game. No solo game. Mm -hmm. Okay. You want to see them in an RPG? You want to see them in more of an action or more anything? More of an action. Okay. 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 So, out of those two, though, even though in the background 
they mostly mostly do the same thing. What if, what which ones do you enjoy more? Right? Do you enjoy seeing Moogles more? You enjoy the Moogles more than the Toads, or the Toads more than the definitely Moogles? biased to the Moogles? Okay, okay. Got more of a Toad person, um, <laughs> just because of their personality and everything, but like that. Okay, all right, all right. So, um, that going to basically wrap up our episode here, uh, and you know I would love to hear what the listeners have to say, but we'll have to do maybe try to do maybe an episode where we can have like people maybe mail us like their ranks of like Definitely you know feedback. Like, yeah, yeah feedback tells the ranks of like which ones out of the two categories that we've been mentioning which one you you like more of so we'll have more information about that on one of our commercials that we're working on right now for the show and everything like that but the next journey is going to be more of adventure explosive globe trotting right um inspire like indiana jones a bunch of stuff and this is going to be drake from the uncharted series against the original laura og croft. laura croft from the tomb raider series so join us when we go a little bit down under a little bit further into their to their series and how much they actually i think this is the two characters that actually influence each other each game going in prior to, the to modern. yeah prior to the modern time of Laura Croft, basically. Yes. And so, and then we're going to see how the ones earlier have influenced the entire series. And so, we'll catch y'all on our next episode. See ya. Hi, and thank you so much for taking time to listen to the show that is part of the In Game Boss program. Remember, you can always visit us on Facebook and Twitter to get the up to date news about what shows are premiering and whatnot. And also, you can always listen to our shows on iTunes, Podbean, and YouTube. And remember to follow and subscribe, leave a review and a five-star rating to keep us going. And thank you so much.